Hello, this is uh, Gwen Dallas. My ham radio call sign is AD5NL. I'm making a short video here to uh, discuss how we can use the Raspberry Pi as an educational tool to learn about how uh, Bash and the Linux operating system work underneath the hood. Uh, I made this video because today I started experimenting with a uh, Raspberry Pi um, 2 Model B. Uh, it's a device I've had for a while, and I've had some hardware projects in mind, um, but I had never really experimented with it, so I started doing what you might consider Hello World projects. The Raspberry Pi, as you probably know, unless you've been under a rock for the past five years, is a single board computer, uh, runs an ARM processor, and uh, that gives you just enough power to... Um, run a variant of Linux called Raspbian. It's a, a fork of Debian. Uh, it also has 40 general purpose I.O. pins, which we can use as ribbon cable here to connect to a uh, breakout board uh, where you can uh, put circuit components. And a typical, uh, you know, first project with this uh, is to light up an LED. So here I've got a jumper uh, connected to port uh, 27 here on this Kanakit uh, breakout board. And uh, pin 27 here is then connected to a uh, 220-ohm resistor, uh, a red LED that goes to the uh, negative or ground here on the 3-volt rail. And I've done something similar here with pin uh, 23 with this green jumper and another resistor and a green LED going to the ground over on the five volt rail. Um, so <clears throat> now that we've implemented this in hardware, let me show you how you actually implement this in software. So <clears throat> the uh, Raspberry Pi, um, of course, has an HDMI port, which is this port here. And that allows me to connect it to a monitor or television set, in this case, a TV. And we've got the uh, terminal open uh, here in uh, the GUI. And the way this works is you, you set up um, GPIO pin under sysclass GPIO. Um, I'll have uh, scripts and everything on um, GitHub, and I'll put a link in the comments. But in any case, basically you um, write to the value file under the pin directory and if it's one it'll turn it on if it's zero it'll turn it off so here we're gonna turn it to one and uh, I apologize for the light you can see that actually activated the red LED um, I'm gonna go ahead and pass a zero to it I apologize for that you can see it turned the LED off so as soon as I was able to start messing around with this in, um, on the uh, software side, I decided I would start uh, writing a script here to, to figure out you know, what all I could do. So I wrote this script called pendulum.sh. It's kind of a, a pun or a play on words. Uh, PI because it's Raspberry Pi and it's using pins. Pendulum because it turns it on and off. So uh, the first, you know, there's my, you know, hash bang there, and then uh, the pin variable is equal to the first uh, positional parameter. We have the initial state basically reads the current uh, current contents of value. Um, then we get uh, interval, which is the length of time between blinks, um, and that's the second parameter. We have a counter. A limit is uh, basically the number of times it'll blink, and exit code is the exit code that should be used as soon as the script is over. I set some default values here. You know, if the parameters aren't defined, then it defines them. Then I've got a while loop here that uh, basically so long as the number of um, blinks is less than the limit, it'll uh, switch the state from one to zero or zero to one. And then it will increment the counter. Uh, it'll end the uh, if statement and then it'll uh, sleep for the interval and then finally it'll it'll put out the exit code uh, before the script quits so let me go ahead go back to the main command line this allows us to uh, let's see where I've run this 
Okay, so this is going to blank pin 27, which again is our red LED. Um, it'll do it once every second. I'm going to do it instead of 10 times, I'm only going to do it five. And it'll return status code zero when it finishes. So I'm going to go over here just so you can watch what happens and hit enter. There's first blank, second blank, third blank, fourth blank, fifth blank. All right, no more blanks because the script is finished. Okay, so we have the ampersand operator in Linux. And, you know, if you're curious to know what this does, this, this is a good demonstration of it. So I've used the ampersand before, and it, it, it forks processes, and I know that. But I guess I'd never really appreciated, um, you know, the fact that you've basically got two processes running. Well, let me show you what happened. So we, we've got the left and we've got the right. And so, you know, you've got two commands. And so just if you don't know, and if you do know, stay quiet. But if you if you don't know, uh, what's going to happen? Is Are they going to run at the same time? Is the left going to run and then the right? Well, let's find out. Uh, I go ahead and hit enter. And you can see they're both lighting up. So we've got the script for port or pin 27 and the script for pin 23, and they're both executing at the same time, uh, blinking both of the LEDs. Okay, now let's try another experiment. Let's try doing that again. Okay, but let's hit Control C to terminate. Notice what happened there. Uh, one of the lights continued to blink and the other didn't. And what happened is when I did Control C, it caused uh, the script for port 23 to terminate, but not the one for 27. Uh, so you, you need to be aware of the fact that if you use uh, an ampersand to fork the process, one of the processes may die if you try to kill it. Uh, the other one will not necessarily do so. Um, and that, that can be a problem, or that could be a feature, depending on what you're doing. Now, <clears throat> there's also, in Linux, there's double ampersand. And, um, you know, that has a different semantic meaning. And let's find out what that means. So if we have two ampersands here, let's take a look at our board. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Aha! So only the left is running right now. Three, four, five, and then as soon as that's finished, then the next script runs. So this runs serially, and it's going to run this way because, well, I'm not going to spoil it. Okay, let's go back to this script and change the exit code that this returns to one. Let's see if it does the same thing. Aha! <laughs> You'll note here that this did not run the second script uh, command, which would have turned on the green one. Now, let's take a look here and change the double ampersands to a double pipe. This, uh, this means or. You can see here that now it runs serially and it disregards the fact that the exit code is not zero. In the Linux operating system, an exit code of zero generally means successful conclusion. In any event, um, this is uh, an interesting project. It, was, it made me think a little bit more deeply about something that I kind of knew already uh, that our company's IT guru had explained to me when he uh, gave me access to, to our Linux ser uh, servers, but um, I guess I never really tangibly understood what was going on. And I think that's one of the benefits of playing with a Raspberry Pi, as you can see, um, and again, it's not lighting up, that's just the sun coming through the window. Um, <clears throat> you can see visibly, you know, what the processor is doing, rather than 
you know, as you often do as a Linux admin, you know, typing a p command and then just waiting for it to run uh, and then going back to the command line. So anyways, I uh, hope this was educational. Um, have a nice day. Uh, this is Gwen, 85NL, 73s. Um, and best of luck. <laughs>